Hey guys, what's up? Happy Dia de los Muertos. Although when I post this, it'll be past Dia de los Muertos. But I'm filming it on the 1st of November. And I know I look a little crazy right now, but I just went and did my eyebrows before I started filming just so we could speed things up a little bit. And you'll understand why one eye is blue in a second. So today I'm actually going to the Melt Cosmetics launch for their Amor Eterno collection, which is their Day of the Dead and Mexican culture inspired collection. In the invitation, it said skull makeup encouraged. And so today, I want to do the skull from the actual packaging. So that's why I got one blue eye. And I know I've got eyebrows and the skull does not have eyebrows, but because I didn't think I'd be able to do this rose on my eye area, I thought it would be really complicated to get this sort of minute detail on this area. So instead I'm gonna do a normal eye makeup and I'm gonna do the rest of the skull on my face. So it's going to be this skull, but with a touch of glam. So I'll be using the shadows as normal shadows and to shade in things Things like the skull details and the flower details. So yeah, I'm super excited to do this. I have been dying to put this on my face. Haven't had the chance because of Halloween. I know that all I wanted to do was just sleep all day on November 1st. I just wanted to take some time to rest, but instead I'm here filming this look for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to it, but before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. For the blue side of my face, I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Flash Palette. I mix the teal, the blue, and the black, and this is what I've got. This is a good mid-tone, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Oh, nope, should not have put that there. There's gonna be a big old flower there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the areas of my face where that blue is going to be peeking through. And most of my face is going to be covered in flowers. So I'm not gonna need this for the whole half of my face. I'm gonna apply it around my brow, leaving room for the big flower on my forehead. Once that's done, I'm just going to powder it with some translucent powder. So now that I look even more crazy, I'm gonna start shading in the skull parts. And today I'm gonna to be using the brushes from this collection. This is the little baggie that is Sit Up It inspired. It is so cute. You can fit everything in here except for the palettes, which I was a little bit bummed about because the palettes almost fit, but not quite. And I would have loved to be able to fit the entire collection in here. So the brushes look like this. They're really, really stunning. They have this cut out design, which mimics the designs of the little paper flags that are hung during celebrations. And what I actually really love about the brushes is that the name for what they are is in Spanish. So this one is the transition brush. It says transition. And then we've got linea for the liner brush. We got lapis for the pencil brush and so on and so forth. And the concept for the palettes is life and death. So vida y muerte. And that's what I'm gonna be doing to my face. And I think I'm gonna start with the vida side. This is what the palette looks like. It is absolutely stunning. And I'm gonna be using these tones here to shade in the skull. Actually, you know what? I'm going to draw in the nose before I start doing that so that I know exactly where to shade around it. I'm gonna be going in with my Wolf Essentials palette for this. And I'm just gonna take the black so that I can fill in the skull nose. So I'm gonna round out the bottom. I'm gonna leave a space between the sides. I just realized I almost forgot to show you guys the gorgeous PR box that the collection came in. It's a black box with a shiny cutout design over it and it is just so stunning. We've got some hidden makeup products in the design. So we've got the highlighter, we've got lipstick, and it's just so, so, so stunning. They did such a good job with the design of the entire collection. Okay, now I can start shading in my skull and I'm gonna start with the lightest shade, which is called Atole. And I'm tapping off the excess because I know that their shadows are super, super pigmented. And I'm just gonna start shading in around the nose area. This is a really nice, cool toned transition shade. I'm actually also gonna grab the transition brush and grab a little bit of that color so that I can blend it outwards here. And then taking it towards my brow. Now I'm gonna use my little color switch and I'm gonna go in and do the blue side. So now we've got the Muerte palette, which is my favorite of the two, although I think both are absolutely stunning, but these colors are just calling out to me. And I'm gonna go in with the color Duelo to start shading in this side. Oh, that's pigmented, oh shit. 
Uh oh. The thing about melt shadows is that they are so pigmented and that's what I love about them because I personally love shadows that are super super ultra pigmented but they aren't the easiest to use if you are a beginner at makeup. It makes things a lot harder. For beginners I recommend shadows that you can build up slowly because then you don't risk putting a ton on all at once and then you're kind of stuck trying to blend that out. But I personally love super super pigmented shadows. If you've ever used the ABH subculture palette, it's like that level of pigmentation. And then again, I'm gonna take it on my little transition brush just so I can blend things out. I also realized I forgot to do the little lines here, although that's gonna make me look like I have a permanently furrowed brow. But anyway, it's part of the skull. And then I'm gonna start mapping out the flowers and I'm going in with the white wool face paint and I'm just going to roughly map them out. And I also don't expect to replicate them 100% the way they are in the packaging. But you can see that I'm using the brush to kind of help shape the petals. And I'm just doing that by loading the brush and it's a rounded tip brush. And I'm just going in and just kind of pressing down and it creates petals. And so you can use that to your advantage. And so I'm just gonna do these layers of petals and I'm gonna leave a blank space for the black here of the skull. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a bunch of petals, just kind of layers of petals. And it looks like a flower that took you a super long time to paint, but in reality, it was just you stamping the brush over and over. And then I'm kind of painting in the little middle section of the flower, and I'm going to refine that later once this dries. And then on the forehead is going to be a rose, and it's half white and half yellow. And this one, I'm going to try to replicate it as best I can, or at least somewhat follow the design. I don't want any skin peeking through, so I'm just lightly doing some white over it. And then while that's drying, I'm just going in and highlighting this flower here and there wherever I think it needs a little more definition. Now the rose has dried, I can go in with a second layer of the white and I wanna highlight the outer edges of the flower. You'll see this starts to form a flower and all I'm doing is kind of layering the white strategically. Now I'm gonna be taking the Mayron Paradise paint in the color Mango and doing the exact same thing on this side. They are mirror images of each other and layers of those petals. The artwork on the palettes is so stunning. And one thing that I wasn't expecting is for the palettes to have this embossed effect on it. You can see that the flowers are shiny and they are raised and then the roses on the eyes, they're kind of velvety. It's really, really stunning. And then the flowers on the back are embossed and shiny as well. I'm like really, really impressed with the collection. You can tell that so much time and thought went into it. And it's refreshing to see something like that because nowadays it seems like makeup companies, they're just trying to churn out as much as they can. And now that's why I tend to like indie companies now a bit more because they're actually putting thought into their collections. They're not just trying to churn out product every single week, you know what I mean? Like the market is definitely saturated at this point. And so it's nice to see products that are really well thought out. And now for a second round of highlighting here and there and then drawing the little center of the flower. And it seems like I'm going to have to layer this one a lot because you can definitely see a lot of my skin still peeking through. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Wolf Yellow just so I can do some brighter highlights here and there. Just like on the ends of the petals. You can see how much dimension that gives to the flower. And then same thing on the rose. I'm going to concentrate this on the very ends of each petal. Now same thing but with pink and I'm doing roses on this side. I think actually I'm gonna mix in the red for the base and then I'm gonna do highlighting with the pink. And here there's like a big old rose. While I wait for those to dry, I'm gonna do the purple ones on the muerte side. Now back in with the pure pink to highlight the rose. I'm taking off the excess so I can kind of blend that a little bit. Then I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of white. I'm just gonna dot it on and then clean off my brush and blend it in. Then I'm also gonna take some white and do the highlighting on the purple side. 
And these down here look really weird. They don't really look like flowers, but there's gonna be teeth here and the black here. So they're flowers that kind of got cut off. So that's why it's got this weird shape. You just have to kind of draw random petals and it'll still look like a flower, but it's not as defined as the other ones. Now I'm gonna do some shading in the flowers and I'm gonna start with the yellow flowers and I'm using the ultra matte gel liner in Cultura and I'm gonna be using the liner brush and I've, whoa, this is really soft. I've never used these liners before but I saw Laura on the melt Instagram page saying that they don't dry out the seams really really soft really really nice and it's kind of the perfect color to shade in the petals so I'm doing the opposite now on the opposite side of where I did the highlight now I'm gonna shade and just blend it up towards the highlight that's a really, really unique liner color. I don't know if I've ever seen a gel liner in this color before. It's probably also really good as like an eyeshadow base. Might actually take this on a slightly flatter brush so that I can blend it out better. And also taking the yellow from the flash palette to help blend that into the highlights. I want a smoother transition. Same thing over on this flower. Now for the white flowers, I'm taking the Vida palette, taking that same first color that I used and just doing the same sort of shading. And I'm also bringing it lightly onto the yellow side to shade these petals that are half and half. And I think that really helps to add to the effect that it's one same flower, just the color changes midway. Now I'm going to shade in the pink flowers with the color Corazon from the Muerte palette. And excuse my accent, I do not speak Spanish. <laughs> this color is, I don't even know how to explain it, it's like a pinky red. It's just so gorgeous and so unique. And I love how the colors in the artwork are the colors that are in the palettes. And so you're able to kind of replicate it perfectly by using the eyeshadows. Now for the purple flowers, I'm going to take the color Velorio, which is the same word in Portuguese, Velorio, which means wake or funeral. It's funny how Portuguese and Spanish have sometimes the same words, sometimes very similar words, like this one, sangre. In Portuguese, it's sangue. So very similar words, but not quite the same. Or like this one, noche eterna. In Portuguese would be noite eterna. So that's why I can understand Spanish. I just can't speak it. Now I'm actually going to do a small rose using the Cultura liner as my base. And it's the perfect color for this. I'm going to go in with a small brush and highlight the petals using that same paradise paint that I used for the other flower. And then on this side, there's a blue flower and I'm gonna go in with the wolf teal face paint and just do pretty much the same. And I'm also gonna start drawing in leaves with this color here on the muerte side. So the way the leaves are drawn is they're divided down the middle and in one half, they've got a highlight on one end and on the other half, the highlight is on the other end. It'll make sense in a bit. There's also leaves over here. Now I'm going to take a tiny bit of white to highlight this flower. I'm going to use it on the leaves as well. Then I'm going to take Duelo again and shade in the flowers and the leaves. Or rather, just one flower. And then I'm going to go ahead and shade this flower with this color again. I'm going to see if it's... I don't know if it's dark enough. I might try pan dulce because it's a little bit more orange. Yeah, okay, pan dulce is definitely a better option for shading here. I might even include that in the yellow flower because it gives a little more richness to the shadow. Ooh, that is crazy pigmented. I have to be careful with this. Okay, now I think I'm going to move on to the teeth and I'm going to start with the shading. I'm using that same color again. I'm going to map out where my teeth are going to go. Second one there. Teeth are kind of big. Like in the skull, the third one's already like under this flower and then they go into the flower. I might have to clean up this area a bit. And then on the bottom, I'll wait to shade that after I've done the teeth. And then there's shading in between each tooth. And then to highlight that little tiny area, I'm just going to take my Lunatic Cosmetics Lab Contour Palette Volume 1 and I'm going to use this color here. It's the pale yellow. And I'm going to highlight in between that shading. 
I'm also gonna highlight other areas of the face, like around the nose. Since I'm here, I might as well do this now. And then around the nose. And I don't know if I like this thing that I did, because it kind of makes me look like I have a furrowed brow. But it is what the skull looks like. But I'm gonna highlight this area so it looks more like a little line rather than... It almost looks like a unibrow the way I did it, and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna highlight to make sure it just looks like a little, little line. And I'm just refining the highlights of the skull. Highlight here around the orbital bone. But I still want it to seem like it has skull eyes, but I'm gonna do like a smoked out eye. It still needs to look like a skull. So I'm gonna highlight the chin. I'm also gonna shade in around the rose. It has like a little drop shadow. I'm just gonna shade this area here i'm gonna go in with chocolate chocolate i don't know how they pronounce it in portuguese it's chocolate wow that is a really intense brown I know that every time i pick up a new color i'm like wow that's so intense but it really is so intense shade that in then also do like a little bit of a drop shadow around this flower now it's the same thing on this side same exact thing, except I'm gonna be using blue to shade. Shading's done, now I'm highlighting with the white from the palette and gonna be doing the same highlights, same thing. It's a very symmetrical look. The only thing that changes is the color. I'm also gonna shade in the eye socket area just to really define it. One thing I wanna do real quick is on the nose, the skull has some like weird detailing. I mean, it's not weird. It's just like the way the bone is shaped. So I just want to dot on some color there. Same thing here. I might use lagrimas since it's a lighter color. It'll show up. Oh, and before I forget, I'm gonna draw the leaves on this side. I'm gonna go with the gel liner in Fortuna, which is this gorgeous dark green. I'm gonna fill all of it in as a base. Then I'm gonna highlight with the eyeshadows. Ooh, but you can actually get a nice difference in tone, so I'm packing more of it on where I want to shade. Okay, I really like the texture of this gel liner because it's really, really slick, so you can get real nice and crisp lines with it. Can't wait to try the black one on my eyes. I also want to take a little bit of that and do the leaves on this side as well, just to help define their shape a little bit more. Now to highlight the leaves on this side, I'm gonna take Papel Picado, and I'm gonna use that to highlight the little halves of the leaves. Now to map in the teeth, I'm gonna go back in with the gel liner, but I'm gonna use it on a lip brush. I'm gonna start with the Vida side. I wanna make the teeth glittery, so this is literally just a base so that I know where they go. Then I'm just gonna cover up the flower with the teeth. Now bottom ones. Now I'm gonna take the color Sarape and apply that over top. Now for the teeth on this side, I'm gonna go in with the Santos gel liner and it's shimmery and it's also like a true blue. It doesn't tend towards teal. So I'm a little worried about that, but I think it should be fine. And same thing, just mapping it out. This one seems to be a bit slicker than the green one. The green one has some grip to it. This one's really, really slippery. Then I'm gonna take the color Angelito, which is like a shimmery teal, and pack that on top. Oh, that is a pretty color. And on top of the teeth, I wanna go in with some glitter because while there's no glitter on the actual packaging, it does have like a bunch of tiny little dots that simulate iridescence. Like if you look at it, it's just bunch of little dots so I just want to do that and also the glitter will be an extra protection so that this doesn't come off I know that the glitter primer is like waterproof and stuff it'll be a nice extra little protection but before I do the glitter I want to do some shading here it's basically like the shading that I did on the top and I kind of want to add a little bit of aguardiente to intensify those shadows and up here at the top as well. Add that over here too. And then same thing on the muerte side. And I think I'm going to add some panteon, which is this color, to deepen. Whoa, that is really...
real dark. <laughs> now for the glitter, I'm gonna be using Shroud Cosmetics glitters. They used to be Strobe Cosmetics. I'm gonna be using this lime green on this side, and I don't know the name because this was a lab sample. And then this one is Aspect from the new Arcana collection that hasn't come out yet. This is also a lab sample. I talked all about the Arcana collection in my last video if you wanna go check that out. I'm gonna start with the Vida side, and I'm taking some NYX glitter primer onto my little lip brush that I used to map out the teeth and I'm just going to go over the teeth with the primer, just applying it where I want the glitter to go. You can be really precise when applying glitter with this primer because glitter needs a sticky base. So you can be really precise with your application of the primer and then the glitter will only stick to those areas. Then on that same brush, you just pick up the glitter and pat it on like so. Oh, that is so gorgeous. And this glitter primer makes glitter become transfer proof so you don't have to worry about it falling or getting into your mouth so once it's on it's on for good that's why i'm just going over and giving it a few little pats to make sure that the glitter is completely stuck to the primer and that way it will not come off oh that is so pretty now same thing on this side with aspect and aspect is more of a clear glitter with a blue shift I think it'll work really well. I feel like the teeth have lost a little bit of definition here, so I'm just taking a little bit of that blue liner again and just tracing the teeth just so they're not lost. Now onto the eyes and then we're done. I'm gonna start with the Muerte side and I'm gonna start with the color Corazón and I'm just gonna apply that on my crease. I'm basically just using the colors of the rose in each eye, but just doing like a normal eye look and I used a white base on this eye so that I could get this highlight on my brow bone and because I knew I was using red so I didn't want it to mix with the blue on the lid. I got a little bit of blue by mistake here on the very center of my lid but that should be fine. I'm also going to take that color under my eye. Now I don't know if any of these colors are not deemed eye safe. Usually vegan red colors aren't FDA approved for use around the eyes but that's just because the FDA has super outdated laws in regards to certain pigments. So if any of these are marketed as like a pressed pigment, they are technically not deemed safe for use around the eyes. I did not do my research, so I don't know if that's the case with any of these. This blends out really beautifully. I'm gonna take Sangre next, which is the next color right beside it and just deepen the crease even more with that, bringing it onto my lid as well. And then I'm gonna pack on Velorio along the lash line and lid area. I'm also gonna take that under my bottom lash line and go back in with Corazon to just really blend everything together. I also wanna take some Corazon and just pack it on the outer edge of the bottom lash line. I don't want that color to disappear. It's fine if it gets onto the flower. I don't mind that. Now I'm just packing Corazon kind of over top everything to brighten it up a little bit, but also really intensify that color. Then to finish the eye off, I'm gonna take this color here, Calaca, and I'm gonna pack that into my inner corner. And then actually the last thing I want to do shadow wise is I'm going to take the highlighter which is called Illumination and it is so gorgeous. You can see there is a sugar skull on it and I'm going to take that color and apply it to my brow bone. I think it has like a pinky shift to it which I think will work really well. Now for the Vida side, I'm going to start with the color Sol and same thing, I'm going to apply that to my crease, blending it out. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of pan dulce, start deepening that up. Now I'm gonna go in with a red, it's called Mexicana, and it's a very, very bright orangey red. It's really stunning. I like that both eyes are gonna be red, but they're two completely different kinds of red. One is very orange and warm tone, and the other one is more pink and cool tone. But yeah, both of these palettes are beautiful together. I think the color choices are so, so, so pretty. I can't wait to use these palettes for like normal looks, but I gotta say, I am really digging doing this skull. I'm gonna take some more Pan Dulce to blend it out, a little bit more Sol. 
Because this eye is way darker than this one, I want to intensify this one a little bit. So I think I'm going to go in with some chocolate on my lid just to give this side a little bit of deepness as well. I'm going to take that on the pencil brush. This way the eyes aren't super imbalanced in their intensities. And packing on some more Mexicana to really keep that red. don't want to lose the intensity of the red, I just want to make it darker. So you might have to go back and forth between the two colors. But yeah, the quality and the formula of these shadows seem very consistent with all the other melt shadows I've used in the past except for the radioactive. If you watch that video, those shadows have a different formula. I think because of the nature of neon pigments, but this formula is very much like all their other shadows. And then I'm also going to take Illuminacion and run that through my brow bone. And for the inner corner, I'm going to use the same color on both eyes. This shadow, it's really powdery, but it's not super shimmery. I don't know, it's weird to explain. I feel like I would have liked it more if it had more sparkle to it. Oh, it's so powdery, it's getting all in my eye. Careful. I don't know if getting it wet would help. I'm gonna try getting it wet I'm using some setting spray. Oh yeah, that definitely helps because then that reduces the powderiness of it. Yeah, this has to be used wet for sure. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, it has so much fallout if you don't use it wet. I literally have it like all over my face. Okay, so I literally had to go out and take out this contact to wash it off because there was a film of eyeshadow on it. So when using this eyeshadow, be warned, use it wet. Now for my waterline, I'm gonna go in with the Melt Eyeliner Pencil in the color 818. This is a really pretty deep maroon color. This is not from this specific collection, but I figured I'd use Melt to keep the theme going. Now I'm gonna do a cat eye using the gel liner in the color Immortal, which is the black. And I'm super excited to try this. And I'm using the liner brush for this. I'm not used to using brushes like this to do my liner. Whenever I use gel liner, I typically use like a flat slanted brush, but this brush seems really, really good. It matches the formula of this liner well, because you definitely have to change what type of brush you're using depending on the formula. I would never use a brush like this on a drier formula of liner because it just would not work. Definitely has to be slick, almost liquid, to be able to use a long pointed brush like this. I'm gonna go put on mascara, lashes, wig, outfit, everything, and I'll be back to show you the finished look and to give you my final thoughts on the collection. And this is the finished look. I am super happy with how it came out. I was able to do it in like four hours, which is less time than I thought it would take. So I'm really happy about that. Oh shit, I forgot to do the black. Oh no, 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 Ah. Uh, now I'm gonna take my black wolf face paint and I'm just going to fill in the hollows of the cheeks. So it starts where the teeth ends and goes up and over into the flowers. Oh man, I would have hated myself if I had forgotten this. I'm also going to do a quick little line and like that. And now I'm going to very, very quickly take this color right here and just create like a little drop shadow on both sides. Now this is the finished look. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. I put on these two little flower headbands that I had, a black wig because I'm gonna be wearing all black and I really want the focus to be the face. So I didn't wanna distract by adding different colored hair. I just wanted everything to be black and then have the face be the focal point of my look tonight. The lashes I'm wearing are the Huda Beauty hoodie lashes, the hoodie number 23. And yeah, I really, really like the collection. I really think it's a wonderful, wonderful collection. I don't know the price of the items or the launch date. That wasn't included in the PR package, so I actually have no idea. But I imagine it's going to be in the same price range as their other products, which they aren't super cheap, but they are so worth the money. The quality is definitely there. I'm never disappointed by the products from Melt. And that's it. And I have to go head off to the party, but I hope you enjoyed seeing this look. Let me know if you want to see more looks using this collection, something a little bit more wearable, a little bit more normal. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons who support me and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, so real quick, I just wanted to come back. I've just gotten home from the party. It was 
such a beautiful event and I just wanted to share some information that I did not know before I left. My voice is completely shot right now. You know when you have to scream at a bar so that people can hear what you're saying? That's what I've been doing all night, so please excuse that. But for the people asking, when will this collection be released? Officially, it comes out on Black Friday, but if you sign up for the newsletter, you might hear about it sooner rather than later. In regards to how much it costs, I don't know the prices. I know that the entire PR box, if you buy the full box, the full thing, it's over 250 if you buy all the products in the collection. So it is quite a lot of money, but that's if you're buying every single piece. Other than that, I also just wanted to show you how my makeup held up. I drank all night, I ate all night, and it has not budged. Only a little bit on the inside of my mouth has come off. But other than that, I just got a little bit oily and that's it. So yeah, the makeup held up really, really well. For my eyes, there's no creasing, no transferring, nothing. So it's held up really, really well. And with that, I say good night. It is now almost two in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.